is Freddy with Freddy Can Fly and in today's video we are going to be starting into my everything nitro kind of video series. Um, I've done a lot of research and stuff on, on, on YouTube and, and on forums and what have you and I haven't really been able to find too much in the way of videos that, that is of, of certain nitro related topics so I kind of wanted to start um, kind of gearing towards that to help some of you out. Now the first thing I figured we could start into is, well, obviously the motor, because that's what makes the Nitro a Nitro. And I've got my, uh, this right here is the OS55. If you have the OS50 or a YS or you're using a 91 or the 105, um, all of it's, for the most part, going to be exactly the same. There might be slight variances, like, you know, like the 105 has that little um, feathered out coupling that goes on the carburetor. Um, this one has a regulator some of them don't so but but for all intensive purposes guys you could use this particular video and the series we're making moving forward here and apply the information to just on your motor so today's video we're going to be talking about how to deconstruct the motor um, this is going to be helpful for many different situations whether you're just doing a routine maintenance and you want to go through and clean the motor keep everything healthy and new um, if you do happen to come across a damaged part or a crash um, and you need to fix something internally this will help you take it apart so you can troubleshoot and figure out what parts to repair and replace um, and overall it's just good healthy knowledge because if you understand your equipment and how it all works it's just going to help you uh, get the machine flying and give you an overall better better result so I wanted to talk real quick about a couple of the tools that you're gonna if you're a nitro flyer you're gonna want to have specific tools um, now there's always going to be some sort of a backdoor way to do certain steps um, that's just that that's always been the case and I'm guilty of some of it too but um, one of the most important tools I found to have being a nitro guy is a, a um, crank uh, or a piston locking tool um, back in the day growing up when I didn't have access to this kind of stuff what I usually did to tighten down the nut and I'll show this to you guys in a moment but I used a pair of like rubberized grips and jammed them in and I found that if you did that wrong it could mistreat the motor and cause cause damage so get yourself one of these guys if you're gonna be a nitro flyer trust me it comes in absolutely handy they sell two different versions this one obviously is for the 55 uh, and smaller I believe um, and then they sell one that's for like a 91 up to a 105 so pick and choose that but um, yeah, this is to lock the uh, the piston in place so that you can tighten down the bolt on top. So get yourself one of those. Uh, and I really enjoy this tool. There are several different variations of them. Uh, Fat Boy also makes one, um, but it just basically has four different bolt sizes on it. Um, and this works for the um, the glow plug, the bolt on top, uh, and then you know amongst the heli, any other things. But it's just really great for turning. Um, as far as glow plug removal goes, I have found no issues with this working on most machines. But when the when the uh, heli is actually installed, or I'm sorry, the motor, when the motor is actually installed, I found something like this is a little more easier and, and appropriate for getting your glow out. So um, a heat source is going to be great. Now for a brand spanking new motor, this probably isn't going to be something you need. But if it's a used motor. Sometimes those parts they made up and they made up real tight. There might be dried up, you know, fuel um, and, and debris and whatnot. So sometimes you have to heat up certain parts. Some people throw the thing in the in the oven. Some guys use a heat gun, which works very well. Um, obviously, open flame and stuff like that's not always the best source. But I found a little torch pen for kind of just heating up some of the metal spots works good for me. A heat gun will also suffice. And that's really about it, guys. I mean, this isn't that hard of a process. Um, now, I don't want to get anything on my nice towel, my bench towel here. So I'm going to throw down, I just throw down a little paper towel, okay? Keep things clean. Um, these, these brand new out of the box, they do have quite a bit of oils and stuff in them. And then, of course, if they've been ran, you're probably going to be getting fuel and stuff all over the bench. So, um, assuming that the motor were to be completely uninstalled, okay? Let's begin the deconstruction process. So take in mind, guys, I can't really film how to remove this from the helicopter because every make and model is different. Um, but you should probably know how to do that. So uh, whether this be a brand new motor or we're doing a breakdown for maintenance and, and whatnot, we've got to get started. So we've got this removed from the machine. Um, 
any other parts that we don't need, you know, just d discard move those aside, helicopter parts and what have you. Um, as I like to deconstruct, I do a lot of visual inspecting because I like to look for what parts I'm going to need to clean, repair, or replace as I'm kind of doing the deconstruction. So at this point, you'll notice that this motor does not have the fan, the fan hub or the fan or the clutch um, because this is a new motor. Um, well, actually, it, it was ran slightly for a few seconds and then I had to replace something on it. So it's not brand, brand new, but it's, it's new. Um, so I already went ahead and removed off the uh, the fan hub and everything. Now let's say that your fan and your your fan hub and your clutch is on, right? You would remove your clutch, take that off. Now the first step we're going to look into is I usually remove the glow plug first, and the reason why I do that is you'll notice that with the glow plug in, you have that really tight compression, right? Barely any room in there, and then the air kind of squeezes and you get that hiss, right? And you can pop it. Um, it makes it just complicated to turn things. Now if you take your tool and just pop out your glow plug, take in mind this would be a great time to um, take a peek at your glow plug, you know, see is your glow plug in good condition. My basic rule of thumb is if you're doing motor maintenance and you're breaking it all apart, I usually put in a new glow plug anyways. Um, this plug again is, is basically brand new so I don't need to really replace that. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and set my glow plug off to the side. Okay, now you'll notice that I can sit and spin the motor. It still compresses a little bit, but I've got, you know what I mean, it's nice and free. So, um, if we're going to remove our fan hub and um, uh, the fan and everything, the first step in that process is going to be removing the back plate on the motor. Okay, so flip this over. You've got four bolts that sit on the back. Okay, go ahead and pop those off. Now mine again, it's a regulated motor, so it actually has the, the, the air that comes out of the back. It uses like the check valve and everything. Let me go ahead and remove this. And uh, you know what guys, give me one quick moment and let me grab a different tool. I always like to make sure that I'm using my, um, my RJX tools. Um, I actually had an offset size one. So anyways guys, back to what we were doing. So we're just going to go ahead and pop off this bottom bottom plate, uh, back plate, whatever you want to call it. Um, you want to take in mind again that this particular part is going to have a rubber seal. Um, this could be another one of those parts that needs to be uh, maintenanced or looked at. Let's say that your, your rubber seal is going bad um, or maybe it's broken off or something. You might be getting fuel leaks or air leaks or something. So I found the easiest way to pop this off, guys, is you just kind of give it a bit of a twist like that. And it kind of gives you leverage on the ears, and then you can kind of pop the ears right out like that. Okay, so back plate is off. I always check the internals, and you can see the cleanliness of this motor. Again, it's only been ran for like like 30 seconds. Um, everything looks good in there, but go ahead and check in there, guys. We do, uh, visually, if we're looking for inspections, um, we're looking for scrapes, scars, chunks of metal. Uh, bits of debris and what have you just anything that could cause any issues with the motor or that needs to be cleaned for for use and then when we talk about assembly of course you always want to take a uh, take mental notes or even realistic notes about what you take apart because you'll notice that on this particular motor and I think with most almost all well actually all OS motors I want to say but I'm not sure about all the other brands but this um, the back plate does have a bevel spot on it or a flat spot for clearance on the piston and everything. So you want to make sure that this does go in the right orientation, okay? But so I'm going to remove this for right now. Uh, I'm going to visibly inspect the rubber seal that's right along the bottom side. Everything looks good. Uh, it is all oily and messy, so um, I use paper towel for the most part, guys, but if you have a good handy, like a, like a, like a shop quality towel or whatever to clean things up, you can. I like to leave the oils and stuff on there because it helps when mating the parts back together. Just be careful not to get any debris on the parts. Um, you know, if you were dremeling on the bench earlier, you don't want plastic or metal shavings or anything. So set that off to the side. Now, if we were removing the fan at this time, or the fan hub that's usually on here, what you would do is, again, uh, best method is you'd get your crankshaft locking tool. Um, and let's see, this side here would be for the 550, or the 55. So that fits right in the bottom there like that. And now what I can do 
is I could stick my tool on there and you know what I mean it, it locks that that uh, piston arm to where I can sit and twist on the nut right and get it all off now this is where the heat comes in handy guys if you are having any issues with getting this off I mean you're really really wrenching on it and it just doesn't want to budge don't force it don't try to, to break any parts um, usually your fan is plastic but the fan hub should be metal so this is why if I had my fan hub on I could take my torch pin and I could just slowly heat around the metal fan hub uh, if I had to I could come up top and, and heat up the bolt because it's metal and at some point in time the more and more um, heat that you apply things start to get hot they start to loosen up as well know metal does expansion and contraction with heat and cold um, and then just keep working it you know until you can budge that you don't want to cause any damage at this point especially on this back end that's why I really recommend the locking tool now let's say if you're asking yourself Freddie I don't have that tool I don't want to spend the 20 bucks on the tool or however much they cost you can, if you wish, take something with a padded grip. I like the rubberized grips. Um, and let's see, so if we're trying to get something off, we want to be going counterclockwise. So you'll notice that there is, let's see if we can get this in here. Um, usually when the piston's all the way back, there's a hole on the top and on the bottom there. So you would stick the handle of the tool in whichever direction you want to or whichever slot you want to, to control orientation, if you will. So, for example, if I want to put it, let's see, if I need to spin counterclockwise, I'd have to bias this right here into the, this top part of that hole. And it just locks and holds the, the, the cranks, uh, the, the, the piston, the piston rod. There we go, I'm fumbling here. And then now I can actually turn this without it. you got to be careful, guys, when you do this, though, because if you, ha if you turn too hard, and it starts to it starts to bite down um, you could be causing some damage internally on the motor so um, I don't I'm not gonna say I, I don't recommend this one because I've done it for many times with much success just know there is risk involved uh, this is what I recommend having for this, this part okay so anyways boom we got that done fan hub came off I always like to put the nut back on and then you have this little mine's kinda stuck on there you have this little black washer that sits at the bottom. Now, the nut and the washer always come with the motor, not with the heli kit. So I keep them on the motor. Um, I am not going to be removing the, the back shaft here because I don't need to replace bearings or anything in there. But I'll show you how you could you know, remove that if you need to. Okay, so there we go, guys. We're at this point. Set some of the tools over here to this side that we don't need. So the next thing we could take a look at doing would be uh, let's remove the carburetor. Okay. And that's, that's relatively easy. Um, brand new motors come with the carburetor loose anyways, and it's usually kind of cocked to the side. Uh, but you have just one bolt right over here. And again, this is on the OS55 and most OS models. But there's usually just a compression pin kind of fitting uh, that you'll just kind of pop that off, loosen it up a little bit. I don't take the screw all the way out. I'm going to leave it in there. But then you can kind of just go ahead and wiggle your carb off. Now, same thing, guys, uh, if we're doing maintenance and inspection, this is also going to have a, a ring on it, a little O-ring. Check that. Make sure it's not cracked or dried, um, broken, anything like that. And this bad boy looks nice and clean. I check everything internally. Now, as far as carburetor stuff goes, um, that one's kind of straightforward and easy, guys. If you need to flush the carburetor or you need to really clean it, um, your tuning needles, they just thread all the way out you can clean and flush the inside. I'm going to do a video later talking more about the um, the regulator and how to take it apart and do the clean the diaphragm and everything in there. Uh, but it is still a pretty easy straightforward process. So I'm just going to go ahead and set the carburetor right now off to the side um, and we'll visit something a little bit more in depth with that later. So now we're stuck with this funny looking guy. No carburetor, no fan um, or anything like that. And uh, Next thing is going to be the, um, the heat sink on the front. Now it's really important with the heat sink, let's see what size is that going to be, this one here. Um, they're not Loctited bolts, so I like to loosen all of them first. I think the most important thing when it comes to motor or engine maintenance is you got to realize how precision made these things are, so I try to put as less stress on any of the parts whether they be moving or non-moving just because when I put everything back together I don't want to run into any issues with with cross-threading or 
um, you know, this part doesn't mount to that part correctly now. So, anyways, I just loosened all of them up first, then I'll go back and, and turn them all. Let's see, sorry, this part kind of takes a quick second. These are some long bolts. Um, and then when you remove the header, or the, the heat sink, if you will, you want to make sure there, uh, most motors are going to have a shim in there. Not all. Um, I know it depends, uh, in some cases, on what kind of nitro content you're running. Um... Some might have two shims, some might have one, some might have none. Um, if you do have a shim in there, uh, make sure that it doesn't, you know, drop out and fall on the floor or you step on it or bend it or anything, so you're going to have to replace it anyways. Um, but I did, one thing that I like to do when I'm cleaning my motors and, and doing my, my regular maintenance on motors is I'll, I'll remove the shims out and just give them a really good cleaning because sometimes I've seen some buildup that gets underneath the shim. I don't know how exactly that's possible, but... When you run a motor for so long, I mean, anything's possible, right? So anyways, we got our bolts loosened. <clears throat> okay. oop, oop. Hang on, I got one, one more tight one here. Get them all loose. And then what I like to do is I just leave all the bolts in here. It's much easier when I reassemble the motor. Okay, there we go. All right. So real quick, let's take a look at the header. Uh, or again, I call it the header, heat sink, whatever you guys want to call it. Again, on the bottom side, though, you'll see that we've got the internals. Now, usually, if this is a RAN motor, you're going to see a bunch of, you know, burnt combustion there, you know, some fuel, things like that. But you can see that I've got the uh, the shim located in there. So if I were doing maintenance, I'd clean that whole thing out, you know, use, use a cleaner of some sort, a nice... Uh, scrubby brush thing like I use just like a toothbrush or something just really clean it out nothing that's gonna score or damage the metal uh, but this part's relatively easy to maintenance if it's damaged or broken you just replace the whole thing anyway so make sure you don't lose any of the bolts Let me set this little assembly here off to the side dang it that's ah, okay I'll fix that there okay now we kinda start to come to the heart of the motor um, I have seen this particular part done wrong so many times that people are ruining motors before they even get to fly them in most cases. Like if you're taking your motor apart um, just to check for everything or you had an issue with your ring or anything like that. Um, this part right here, I see people do some of the strangest things. Some of it works, some of it doesn't. Um, but the most important part here is to disassemble the rest of this, which is going to be our sleeve and our piston without causing any damage because these are probably some of the most important parts you scar your 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 liner you're done for you gotta replace it um, you break your piston ring or damage the piston you're done you gotta replace it okay so we wanna do this the right way and the best way to do it is you don't jam any metal parts in you don't prod or pry with any metal devices like flatheads or screwdrivers or anything especially on this so here's a really cool way to get out the liner um, I just get myself a zip tie, so it's just a normal, average Joe, plastic zip tie, nothing fancy, okay, and what I'm going to do is, right inside your, um, your exhaust port here, uh, if you go ahead and turn the piston all the way back, okay, and all the way back would mean that down here the piston rod is all the way back, okay, all I'm going to do, now you can try, if, if you can pull it out with your fingers, if it's loose enough, go for it. Um, chances are it's not, though, because it's a very, very tight fit. So here's what you're going to do. So you're going to take your zip tie, and you'll notice, let's see if I can capture it in there. Um, when you pull that piston all the way back, you can you can see that there's, there's uh, some holes there in the sleeve. All you're going to do, guys, is stick your zip tie in, just like this. See that? Okay, and then what's going to happen is, is I'm going to turn the shaft, and then the piston is going to hit that plastic uh, of the of the um, of the zip tie, right? So let me just try doing it from this way. And as it does that, it's going to press. And then watch what's going to happen. Watch watch my uh, my piston sleeve here. Let's see if we can get this. Let me zoom in for you. Actually, I've seen people, you know, they'll drum a. Uh, a tool like a metal tool or something in there and it, it you scar up the metal again you're done for so watch this guys it's gonna take a little bit of pressure and there we go I don't know if you got that but look you can see that it popped up my liner just enough so let me go ahead and pull the zip tie out now I should be able to yep there we go sleeve comes right out 
piston liner slides right out. So let me zoom back out just a little bit. And that's all it took, guys, was just, just a freaking zip tie, okay? And we didn't cause any damage to the motor. Now, be very gentle with these next couple of steps, guys. There's no reason to be pulling or getting crazy. If, if you can't get your liner to pop off that easily, heat up the case, heat up the liner, uh, whether you use a heat gun or, again, direct flame like, um, like with the, the torch pin. It, it should be this easy to remove, you know what I mean? It should pop right out. If it doesn't, you're forcing it. Stop. If not, you might as well be replacing parts, okay? So this would be a good time to do a visual inspection on your liner. As long as you don't have any scratches inside or, uh, what do you want to do, these scars um, going the length of the, uh, of the sleeve here, then it's good. One thing to also note, which we will go over you know, when we look at some of the assembly things here, is, is on, your, on your sleeve and on the front of the motor cases, you have a little notch right here. You can get it. That's tiny, guys. It's a little teeny tiny notch. Hopefully you can see it. Um, make sure you know where that notch is at all times, because when we reassemble, that's going to play a very big role. Also, take into consideration on the front of the motor, you've got a little, I think it's like an air hole or a gas release or something, um, but that's going to orientate with your sleeve, and if you put your sleeve in and you crunch that down and, and you know, push it and smash it, then you're going to be in some big trouble. So, there we go. Sleeve has been removed. Okay, so now let's talk piston. Um, I don't know why, but for the longest time I found this to be a complicated process until I learned how to do it. And then once you kind of once you kind of get the hang of it, um, it's it's really not too bad. Let me get this it actually just popped right off. So <laughs> let me pop it back on for you guys. It, it was so excited to come back out that it literally just popped right off. Now if yours just pops right off like that, then hey, no no, no big deal. Usually on a used motor, um, it's going to have a little bit more build up and stuff in there so you might find that the piston is, is a little bit harder to do but basically guys all you're going to want to do here and let me try putting mine back on so i can show you sorry i didn't know that would pop right off that's kind of nice makes makes my job easy that's for sure there we go okay so what i would do at this point is you take your um piston and you're going to bias it all the way forward to this position okay and then i hold it down with my finger and you know kind of push it down so that the piston sits right here at the very front so it's flush now again if you've got a lot of build up and stuff on the motor you might want to get in there with a little brush and, and scrubby scrub or hit it with some WD-40 or some cleaner of some sort um, but you really should be able to just very easily pull up with your finger and it should pop right off if it's nice and clean um, if you have any resistance again try using some heat and whatnot but but don't force it like watch this this one right here I'm barely pulling and it pops right off. See how easily that came off? You shouldn't have to really force it. Now, at this point in time, let me set the piston over to the side here. Um, at this point in time, again, you could go ahead and take a look at your rear bearings. Um, you know, you can push this whole assembly out. I'm going to leave that in because, again, the motor's brand spanking new. Um, but this would be basically a deconstructed motor. Um, I want to talk to you real quick about the pinion, or not the pinion, I'm sorry. Well, it, the pinion, yes, but the sleeve on the pinion. Um, so your compression ring, at least I believe that's what it's called. A lot of people just say the ring, compression ring, um, little black metal thingy, whatever you want to call it, um, sitting right there, okay? Now, your ring should have expansion on it, and I learned this actually. The reason why I had to take this motor apart in the first place was... My ring from the factory, actually, after my first run, got stuck down, and so it wasn't actually expanding against the, the liner, so it wasn't creeping any compression, I couldn't start the motor. Um, rings are probably replaced quite a bit, pretty frequent. So taking the ring off, um, let's see here. It can be a delicate process, guys, because if you damage your ring, you're going to have to replace it. So there's really there's really not, not much to do as far as that's concerned. So I'm actually going to do a different video segment on removing the ring and reinstalling the ring, since this video is kind of running a little bit on the long side. So when, it, when we come to just the overall, okay, let's take a look at our motor parts as we've broken everything down. Um, we've got our piston with our ring on it. 
Um, we have got the motor case, if you will. We still have the back bearings and the crank, little crankshaft thing still in there. Um, we still have our, our, our washer and our nut installed. And again, just visually inspecting, cleaning everything. Okay, we've got the carburetor, which I'm going to do some videos on. We'll talk more about carburetor. We have our piston sleeve or liner, depends on what terminology you use. Uh, we have the header and or again the heat sink, uh, depends on what you want to use there. We have our back plate and then we have our glow plug. And essentially guys, this is going to be the full de deconstruction that you get on a nitro motor, clean up things. If it's brand new, you're replacing parts, do, uh, do so accordingly. Uh, and that's about it guys. So um, thank you so much for watching. Again, this is um, nitro engine deconstruction. Follow me in the next couple of video series, guys. We're going to take uh, some time and go over, you know, again, how to, how, we're going to take a look at um, uh, removing and replacing the ring on the piston, um, installing the sleeve over the piston. That's a tricky one. And then um, we'll just take a look at overall reassembly as well and move forward from there. So thanks so much for watching, you guys. Don't forget to comment and subscribe. Feel free to reach out to me at any time on Facebook Messenger. Um, Again, I'm always out there for support and help. And remember, my friends, if Freddy can fly, so can you.